My biggest dream is that one day, the medical profession would completely change how they measure physician performance. The current gold standard is a pencil and paper test. And this is what we call a high stakes examination. And what this means is that if you don't pass the test, you don't get a certificate, and you don't get to practice medicine. And this sort of sets the tone for how physicians are measured in the medical field. What's a little nuanced about the whole thing is that if you get a really high score, no one cares. No one gives you a certificate of excellence or a gold medal that distinguishes you from the person who barely passed. Now compare and contrast this with athletics. This is a profession where testing and performance metrics are used to set personal goals. And that data is constantly used for you to have information so that you can achieve your personal best. Be the best that you can be. In my job, I work as a surgeon, and I also work as a researcher. And we use sensors and motion tracking technology to design new tests and performance metrics. And our goal is to help doctors to be the best that they can be. So take an intubation procedure, for example. This is a procedure that's done when you're going to have a major operation and we have to put you to sleep under general anesthesia. And the anesthesiologist you see in this picture, in his left hand, he has a laryngoscope. In his right hand, he has an endotracheal tube. And that's the tube that we connect to the ventilator that helps to breathe for you. Getting this tube inside of a patient requires a high level of skill. So what we did was build a simulator that has sensors in the airway. And there are sensors in places where the tube should go, but we also put sensors in places where the tube shouldn't go so that we know if you made a mistake. This next graph is really a sensor output. And what you see here um, are all the different colors represent a different area of the anatomy within the simulator. And the graph shows the amount of pressure that's applied in each of those anatomical areas over time. The one you want to look at is the dark red or dark brown area, which is a sensor that's on the tongue. And that actually shows us how many times the clinician is manipulating the laryngoscope and the airway. The dark blue sensor is a sensor that's on the vocal cords. And that's the gateway to the airway, the lungs and the trachea. And when you look at this, this is actually a perfect intubation. This is a really experienced uh, clinician. He got the tube in in 12 seconds. The patient did very well. This person uh, took about three times as long. Um, and what you can see, there's a lot more sensors and a lot more squiggly lines going on on the screen because they're touching other things, the teeth, the airway. And sometimes patients actually do get injured when this happens. So what I'm excited about is that I have detailed performance data for this physician, and I can tell them exactly what they need to do the next time to improve. We built a similar simulator for the breast exam. And the question we raised with this one, because the breast exam is very different, you can use all the number of hands you want, and you have uh, unlimited degrees of freedom. We wanted to know if the sensors can tell the difference between the two most common patterns that are used to explore breast tissue when you're palpating. One of the most common ones is the linear strip method, where you just go up and down across the chest on the tissue systematically so you don't miss a lesion. The other one is a circular method, where you go circle by circle and feel all the tissue. And what we found was that there's a big difference. When you look at the graph on the top, that's the linear strip method. And the way to tell there's a difference, if you focus on the yellow sensor, that's the one that's in the center of the breast. And you pass that area multiple times when you're doing the exam. However, if you're doing the circular method, you start in the center, and you see the yellow sensors there, but you don't see them at the end of the exam. This is really exciting because now we know that the sensor technology can not only tell the difference between novices and experts, but it can also give us detailed information about the specific technique that doctors are using when they're doing uh, their clinical examinations. So I have a video. One of them is the circular technique on 
your left side, and on the right side is the linear strip method. The bottom part of the screen is our sensor map, so we can uh, show on here exactly what technique each of the doctors are using. And this really helps us to understand their technique, and then if their skills aren't that great, then we know exactly where to give them feedback. I have to laugh when I look at this, because no one will ever forget to put a glove on when they're doing this examination. <laughs> <laughs> so, this test, when we built a simulator, this one is for the rectal exam and for the prostate exam. So you've got two organs for the males that are getting this exam. And this is really important because people can get cancer and you want your doctor to be excellent if they're going to do this exam on you. What we found was very interesting is that some of the medical students do a better exam than some of our highly trained specialists and we were very surprised. We took this to several specialists and what we found is that some of the specialists nowadays don't do a complete examination anymore. So that was very helpful for us to inform um, doctors that if you're sending your patient to a specialist, some of them don't do a complete exam. One of our other studies we did, um, we used four breast models with 500 physicians and different specialties. And what we found is that some of the physicians are fabulous. They do excellent breast exams. And we even categorized them as the Olympians because some of them are really, really good. On the other hand, there are about 15% of these physicians that actually don't even apply enough pressure to feel a lesion, and this was somewhat alarming because they all had about 20 years in practice. So we're excited that we're using technology that can actually help us improve our performance in the medical profession. In our lab, we strongly believe that engineering technology can help improve human performance. And we believe that if you give someone detailed performance data and feedback about what they're doing, you can really help them to be the best they can be. What's interesting is we're doing this in an era where everything is so pro-technology, and we're constantly seeking ways to develop and invent robots that can actually do what humans do or take over human tasks. And it's sort of interesting, we really marvel at this technology and it's really, really cool and a lot of it's very exciting. Our direction is actually using the technology to show how exciting and how great human beings can be. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. that was absolutely fantastic. I have one question for you. Yes. So with your innovative ways to test performance, what do you think medicine will look like in 2035? Wow. Well, that excites me. I, I, I actually believe everything will be pretty automated. Um, I always imagine an operating room or any of our clinical areas where I know that I'm actually a pretty good surgeon and what I'm doing, but I know that there's someone next door to me who's doing one part better than I am. Mm -hmm. I would like to have that data automatically. Look, you're doing this and you're doing it that way, but so-and-so does it this way and it's faster or it's better. That's what I would like. Automated feedback. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carla.